वेलकम टू परो लिखो एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एपिसोड टू ऑफ विकसित भारत 2047। एपिसोड वन में हमने जस्ट एक आउटलाइन चर्चा की कि विकसित भारत का हमारे लिए क्या मतलब है क्योंकि विकसित होना एक शब्द है मगर इसके मायने बहुत डिफरेंट है और स्पेशली भारत के सेंस में ये एक बहुत ही डिफरेंट मायने है कि विकसित भारत का हमारे लिए क्या सेंस है और हम कैसा विकसित भारत चाहते हैं और दूसरी बात कि विकसित भारत हमारा गोल नहीं है ये तो स्टेपिंग स्टोन है हमारा एक्चुअल मिशन जो है वो है विश्वगुरु भारत विकसित भारत टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन इज ए स्टेपिंग स्टोन टूवर्ड्स विश्वगुरु भारत और वी आर एबल टू रिकनेक्ट आवर लेगेसी ऑफ पास्ट वेन इंडिया वॉज विश्वगुरु इट वॉज नॉट इंसिडेंटल इट वॉज ए ह्यूज एफर्ट दैट टाइम एंसियन टाइम Indian people has put and India grown up to level where we had a we had a tag of Vishwaguru Bharat. It was not easy, and almost thousand years was there when no country was parallel to India, either politically, culturally, or in the sense of knowledge. We were the we were the supreme, but never we have ruled over other people, other nation or other culture. We never tried to. tried to devastated or we never attacked unnecessary to any of the nations or any of the any of the society that india is following from last thousand thousand years many people attacked uh, attacked on us many people destroyed us they tried to destroy it, but we are having very deep rooted culture it cannot destroy and i have 100% confidence it will never destroy because our way of thinking about the life about the religion about the society and about the person is so deeply enriched it cannot be destroyed maybe it will be change the direction of direction of thinking and this our cultural history is so strong every kind of philosophical thinking are included in our hindu philosophy then india cannot be destroyed it may be suppressed it may be disconnected it may be it may be you can say uh, temporarily temporarily it can be distorted but it cannot be destroyed then now from this stage where after 75 years of freedom still we are struggling to get the two digit of gdp growth rate this is one of the parameter to become successful successful means developed nation or viksit bharat तो विकसित होने के लिए सबसे पहला पैरामीटर जो है हमें डबल डिजिट ग्रोथ को अचीव करना है और इट इज नॉट फॉर वन ईयर एक्सीडेंटली वी हैव अचीव वन ईयर डबल डिजिट जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट एंड वी बिकम विकसित भारत इट विल नॉट पॉसिबल वंस वी अचीव द डबल डिजिट जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट एट लीस्ट वी हैव टू कंटिन्यू फॉर टेन टू फिफ्टीन ईयर्स देन ओनली आवर जी एंड पर कैपिटा इनकम विल रीच इन द रेंज where we can say now we are in the category of developed nation to sabse pehla question ye hai ki us double digit growth ko kaise hasil karenge us double digit growth ko kaise hasil karenge i i want to say how to how to how to achieve double digit growth you will get multi, so many data if you will if you will google it you will go to the youtube or you will go any source of the information then mathematical data and mathematical explanation you will get plenty of that even niti ayog is putting all his intellectual effort to make the vision document 2047 they are putting their best effort how to make the document that document but my question is my question is this looks only mathematical transition right now we are growing with 6% how to achieve beyond 10 maybe 10.5 11% to 12% even 12% is not easy crossing 10% itself needs lot of efforts in multiple direction in multi dimensional effort now i want to just focus here not on the analysis of data some other episode i will tell you i am expert in data analysis i will tell you how to understand based on the data where we were 20 years before where i where we are now and how we will change after 20 or 25 years but data will come afterwards before that 
who will achieve that data people will achieve indian people will achieve one government or one uh, one government or one person or prime minister narendra modi alone will not achieve he is he is trying to fulfill the aspiration of the indians which we are eagerly feeling we should be developed because we deserved it from last many years we are putting effort day and night to become developed then it is not only one government will make it will be finally made by the people of india now people of india how it will achieve it will not happen like you have you have given one vision document like this is a vision document 2047 we have to achieve the gdp this this is everybody will have started to work and you will achieve it it is not going to happen human is a very complex machine human brain is very complex machine how to motivate all 150 crore population or indian towards a single goal how to how to mobilize all our energy of brain towards a single goal how to convince a multiple multiple dimensional people multicultural people multilinguistic people to work for a single goal still many of the many of the parts of the india they are not feeling they are part of india due to some reason how you will able to bring this this goal as a national goal which every indian should feel it is my goal if this national goal will achieve it will be my achievement and if this national goal is not going to achieve it will be failureity of us to mera question hai how this communication will reach to individual people very effective way they should feel this national goal my individual goal my social goal my family goal everything is coherent towards a single direction because still if you, your personal goal organizational goal if you are working for a some company just suppose what will be the crucial success fact for any of the company which are successful like you can take the giant company tata and these all they are much focused on human resource because finally these are the these are the set of person who can uplift your company similar way just suppose nissan is a big company where we have multiple kind of human resources how these human resources will work for a organizational goal like any small company you are going everybody is working for a goal which are decided by the top management of that company but 50 60% people will be not work they will not able to work fully 100% 100% effort or 100% energy to achieve the organizational goal because their personal goal and organizational goal are not aligned their personal goal are something different organizational goal are something different they are having in the condition of conflict and once brain got stuck in conflict of interest it will move but it will move with a like brake condition like you are putting brake on the vehicle and still you are putting accelerator also vehicle will move because you are keep on putting accelerator but vehicle will not get the speed because together you put the brake also in very short span of time your engine also will get heated and you will not achieve anything just same thing will happen if you are not able to convince this my personal goal is alignment is not aligning with our national goal then my question is how to communicate this this fact or this motivation to a common indian it's not easy if you will just take our diversity of india it is a so beautiful country from himalaya to kanyakumari from gujarat to assam and arunachal pradesh variety of people variety of culture variety of language variety of geographical constant variety of variety variety of festivals everything are so diverse how to convince how to convey then main trigger point is there to shift this transformation from 6% to beyond 10% main role is political communication 
because this can be done only politically due to i am telling this trigger point is rediscovery of india once you are able to convey to the people like gandhi ji gandhi ji was able to convey to the people one common message one a small message he was able to convey to the every indian due to multiple region was there that time congress was having good networking and it reach was up to rural india also whatever region was there i am not going to discuss this episode but region was there multiple region was there but due to any region gandhi ji was able to convey small or small national issues or a small or small messages to a common people of india and every common people was having sympathy and emotion with gandhi ji wherever gandhi ji will move i am behind you well no doubt you are going in going in a correct direction for national interest i am with you and they are ready to follow they are ready to follow you will not believe when dandi yatra started to break the salt salt taxation that time gandhi ji started with only 21 people from sabarmati ashram and once there once he reached to the dandi more than 20000 people was behind gandhi that many long journey that many long journey more than 100 km journey not by uh, like a bus or rath or anything why walk after every 100 meter 200 meter people were keep on connecting they started to follow everything they left they started to go behind the gandhi that was the power of gandhi due to discovery of india was possible and nehru has written the book discovery of india it is a classic book any indian i will recommend you must read discovery of india book people will tell i am not preparing for upsc or civil service is why i should read preparation of upsc and becoming civil servant is one different thing knowing about india is our fundamental right we must know about india even it should be a constitutional right you must know about india what india is and what india is having and what government of india is doing for you then we must know then i will recommend you must read discovery of india you will find how much intellectual in depth in intellectual in depth in that writing about the pandit nehru then discovery of india over india has become independent i can say it is it was not fully independent 1947 it was a dependent independent you will get little confusion it was a dependent independent means we so called become independent but for everything we were depending on others if you want to even you will not believe many of the people you will not believe till 1970 till 1970 till bangladesh war 1971 bangladesh war happened till bangladesh war we were depending uh, depending for wheat also on the usa that much land mass that much fertile land hum gehu nahi upja pate the puri tarah bharat vasiyon ko khilane ke liye you will not believe at all hum gehu bahar se leke aate the our contract was there with usa pl480 that contract name was pl480 you can google it and when in india bangladesh india pakistan war happened when during that war outcome was the bangladesh and 91000 army of the pakistan has surrender uh, in front of indian army and bangladesh has uh, become an independent nation afterwards during that during that war indira gandhi was having tremendous pressure from usa to stop the war even usa was full fully hel- helping to the pakistan but god grace before doing any anything uh, very serious russia also started to help us and war has come result has come in favor of us and afterwards after the war usa stopped that agreement pl480 without any argument without any intimation they stopped to fully they told i will not supply ab gehu main nahi dunga tumko tumhe bhuke marna hai maro indira gandhi requested multiple times but all external support same thing happened when atal bihari bajpayee has done the pokhran too in 1998 but atal bihari told now india is not in that era how much you will put the ban india will become much stronger 
If you are stopping one of the way, we know how to innovate the new way. And in 1971 also Indira Gandhi has done the same thing. Indira Gandhi has requested multiple times. Even personally she went to the USA and requested like a Boeing down. She begged, let it be continue PL 480. But they had, they were so adamant that all know that contract is gone means gone. You will not get wheat further from USA. But Indra Gandhi, we are telling, we used to tell she was the iron lady. She also so determined. First, she requested, begged everything done. When she was coming back, she had something in mind. She decided, this is the last and final. India will not beg to any country at least for food. We should be self-sufficient at least for food grains and for it. For uh, you can say this is a fundamental thing. For do bakt ki roti ke liye, dusre days pe depend nahi rahegi. Or that was so determination. She came to India and she started the Green Revolution. And after Green Revolution, you know it became a historical decision. And India become the self-sufficient. And even now we are exporting millions, millions of tons grains to the other country. Afterwards, another political story happened. Green Revolution uh, Phase Two and Phase Three not implemented because meanwhile so other political issues dominated and government also changed. But if Green Revolution Phase One only implemented in India has become the from importer to exporter, then just suppose imagine if Green Revolution Phase Two and Phase Three also would be implemented on time, India would be top in almost all grain products. Okay, I am stopping here. Just uh, I will come to the point. Means how to do the rediscovery of India. Discovery happened. Discovery happened. Multiple decision happened. Nehru has taken so many decision. He also tried from his level best how to move the nation. Everybody was having so many constant. And based on the situation and based on the constant, people will take the decision, especially nation by decision. Indira Gandhi had taken multiple decision and again a strength in the nation. Like 1971 Bangladesh war, nationalization of bank. These few decision was a very strong and bold decision. Nationalization of bank is one of the one of the bold decision and one of the decision which reshaped Indian Indian financial stronghold. Otherwise, many of the many of the times you heard now U.S. economy going down, recession is happening. But every time you heard. Indian economy is not impacted very, very drastically. Little bit effect will be there, but we are able to resilient the negative effect, and we are able to again survive back. There is the reason because nationalization of banking has given very in depth control about the financial market. It was a very good, uh, good control or good, good you can say participation of the government. Public and private, and due to it is able to resilient. It is able to survive in any tough situations. Now time has changed. Now we have to think in little more innovative way. How to bring how to bring India from single digit GDP growth to double digit growth rate? Then we are going to the rediscovery of India. Goal already we know. Goal is very clear. Our goal is Vikshit Bharat 2047. There is non-negotiable goal. We are not going to negotiate with. If someone will tell, okay, chhod do ya 2047 mein nahi hua, 2087 mein ho jayega. No, we are not going to change this deadline. This deadline is fixed. How now? Time is fixed. Resources we have. Resources we don't have. Scarcity of resources. India is the youngest nation in this world. Youngest means our mean mean age of entire population. Mean age of entire population is around twenty to twenty three years. Means we are one of the youngest nation. In same situation was having China and Singapore and other nation other Asian countries which developed forty uh, fifty years before. That point of time they were very youngest nation. आप अगर यूरोप की बात करें यूरोप एक बुरा देश हो चुका है 
they don't have energy they don't have young blood how they will they will able to maintain their growth rate growing is one thing maintaining the growth is another thing ek din paise kamana aasan hai zindagi bhar kamate rehna kathin to usi tarah europe यूरोप जो अपने अपने इकोनॉमी को सरवाइव करने के लिए उसको कंटिन्यू करने के लिए दे डोंट हैव यंग ब्लड तो विकसित भारत 2047 के लिए हमारे पास एक डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंड है वी आर द यंगेस्ट नेशन क्यों हमें बनना है वी हैव डिस्कस्ड बिकॉज एनसीएन टाइम वी हैव प्रूवन नॉट वन ईयर टू ईयर हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड ऑलमोस्ट थाउजेंड ईयर्स इट वॉज ए लाइक ए टॉप ऑफ द एवरी एस्पेक्ट we were the visguru bharat and due to we deserve it again again this track and again to regain it how to regain multiple factors are there just we'll discuss about that goal hamara bilkul fix hai non compromisable goal hai viksit bharat 2047 isme koi compromise nahi hai aisa nahi hai ki 2047 ki jagah chalo theek hai bhai 2087 ho jayega nahi Goal is very much decided 2047 because 2047 will become 100 years of our independence and 100 years are enough time to become developed. Then we have taken this last 25 years as a challenging time. Whatever things we are not able to done in last 70 years, 75 years, we must to do to become developed nation. Then goal is very much decided. We have enough capability. we have all the resources we have all the all the all the you can say legacies it is not like we don't have legacy we already proven in ancient time like a visguru bharat and developed india akhand bharat everything we have proven just we have to regain it we have to regain it how it will happen this is again matter of multiple level of debate and multiple level of discussion it is not only one aspect multiple aspects are there and that will discuss in detail in in many episode how it will be achieved but one thing is very sure we have to follow without stopping this statement of swami vivekananda arise awake and do not stop until goal is reached the next 25 years we have to keep on work towards our goal and individual goal and national goal must be aligned this message should convey from top to bottom just will try to understand <coughs> ki hamare sense mein means hamari hamari understanding mein kyunki sabhi sab har ek nation ke liye apna apna ek culture cultural background hota hai and as per that cultural background they will they will decide and they will understand what is good for me what is good for what is bad for us like whatever many of the customs are there which are good for one of one part of the world but that that feel bad for another part of world means values culture and you can say ethics or social rules it is not fixed it is flexible and it is based on our you can say geography and belief system and sociology and how you can say religion are making making the rules and religion are religion religion are penetrating to the society then we can say every country is having their own set of definitions own set of cultural values based on that they can say we are developed and we had whatever things required we had already and we can sustain for that one of the common things are there that is you can say financial and economic things economic thing means economic figure means uh, you can say per capita income gdp growth rate afterwards your living standards literacy rate sex ratio these are all the sdi indexes that will give one of the sense means your living standards and overall societies are moving in which direction but 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 for uh, viksit bharat as a indian we have our own set of definitions how we can say india has become viksit first thing just we'll apply this 7s viksit bharat formula aur is 7s ko abhi se yaad kar lo mantra ki tarah isko bilkul yaad kar lo ye 7s hai kya sabse pehla cheez hai surakshit 
किसी भी नेशन की कल्पना और किसी भी नेशन के डेवलप्ड होने की शक्तिशाली होने की महाशक्तिशाली होने की कल्पना तब तक नहीं की जा सकती जब तक आप सुरक्षित नहीं हो अगर आप सुरक्षित नहीं हो तो आप किसी भी चीज के बारे में सोच नहीं सकते क्योंकि आप आप जब तक सुरक्षित नहीं हो अदर डेवलपमेंट हो ही नहीं सकते क्योंकि आप फियर में जियोगे आप जब तक डर में जी रहे हो तो आपके कल्चर आपका कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट यू कैन से लिटरेसी डेवलपमेंट दीज ऑल विल नॉट पॉसिबल तो सबसे पहले तो सुरक्षित होना है दूसरा हमारा है समर्थ भारत हम में कैपेबिलिटी होनी चाहिए ऐसा नहीं कि ऐसे ही बोल रहे डेवलप नेशन और महाशक्तिशाली और ये मगर हम में सामर्थ्य ही ना हो हम आत्मनिर्भर ही ना हो हमें एक आत्मनिर्भर भारत बनना पड़ेगा क्योंकि अगर हम आत्मनिर्भर नहीं दूसरे पे डिपेंड है तो दूसरे कभी भी अपना पैर खींच लेंगे फिर क्या करोगे फिर क्या करोगे अगर हम सारी चीजों पे दूसरे पे डिपेंड करते हैं तो हम कभी भी समर्थ नहीं हो सकते कभी भी आत्मनिर्भर नहीं हो सकते तो हमें सारे देश दूसरे देशों पर कुछ ना कुछ हद तक तो डिपेंड करते हैं बट हमारी डिपेंडेंसी ऐसी होनी चाहिए या किसी भी नेशन की डिपेंडेंसी वैसी होनी चाहिए कि अगर वो हमारे वो अगर हमारा साथ नहीं भी दे रहा तो हम इनफ कैपेबल हों अपने आप को सर्वाइव कर तो समर्थ होना चाहिए आत्मनिर्भर होना चाहिए सशक्त होना चाहिए मींस ऐसा नहीं कि सिर्फ ये जो टारगेट होता है डेवलपमेंट का एक बार अचीव कर ली और बैठ गए सो गए घर में सशक्त मींस हमेशा सचेत रहना है हमें कंटिन्यूस डायरेक्शन में काम करते रहना चाहिए चाइना इज बिकम ए बिग इकोनमी लॉन्ग बैक बट स्टिल दे आर एबल टू मेंटेन इट स्टिल देर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टिल देर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्री दे आर कीप ऑन वर्किंग हार्ड टू सस्टेन इट अचीवमेंट इज वन ऑफ द थिंग बट सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज बिगर देन अचीवमेंट अचीविंग द डेवलपमेंट इज मे बी यू कैन से कंपेयर टू सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज इजियर बट सस्टेनिंग द ग्रोथ इज मोर मोर पेनफुल एंड मोर यू कैन से मोर रिक्वायर्ड कंपेयर टू अचीव दिन सशक्त होना उसके लिए हमें सशक्त रहना है नेक्स्ट है हमारा शिक्षित भारत जब तक शिक्षा नहीं होगी तब तक किसी भी चीज का कोई भी असर पॉजिटिव डायरेक्शन में एक जनमानस तक एक समाज तक नहीं पहुंच पाएगा शिक्षित भारत होना है हमें शिक्षा के शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में बहुत सारे आमूल चूल परिवर्तन करने की जरूरत है स्पेशली शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में बिकॉज दिस इज वन ऑफ द कोर आइडिया और कोर थिंग्स अगर शिक्षा अगर ठीक नहीं हुई तो बाकी सारी चीजें ठीक होकर भी ठीक नहीं हो पाएंगी तो शिक्षित भारत चाहिए ट्रू सेंस में ऐसा नहीं कि हमने सबको टेंथ पास करवा के किसी तरह सब पे लिटरेसी का बोर्ड लगा दिए नहीं वैसा लिटरेट होने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है सिर्फ ऐसा लिटरेट होने की कि आप डॉक्यूमेंट पे लिटरेट हो बट रियल में आपके पास ज्ञान ही ना हो आपको आपको ये समझ ही ना हो क्या चीज हमारे देश के लिए सही है क्या हमारे लिए सही है क्या क्या हम हम ऐसा क्या करें जो हमारे देश के लिए बेहतर हो अगर उसी समझ नहीं है तो ऐसी शिक्षा बेकार है जो लॉर्ड माइकाले द्वारा थोपी गई शिक्षा है इंडिया पे ब्रिटिश एजुकेशन ये शिक्षा में कुछ नहीं उस समय भारत गुलाम था और ये शिक्षा पद्धति ऐसी बनाई गई थी कि पूरे भारतीयों को सर कलर्क बनाना है उन्हें और कोई आशा नहीं थी भारतीयों से कुछ बनने की और उन्हें कोई जरूरत भी नहीं थी क्यों जिस पे आप शासन करते हो चाहोगे कि उसका डेवलपमेंट हो जाए आप एक फंडामेंटल रीजन बता दो आई एम आस्किंग टू यू इफ यू आर रूलिंग ऑन सम वन एनी नेशन यू 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 विल नेवर वॉन्ट दैट नेशन शुड ग्रो एनफ इफ दे विल ग्रो एनफ दे विल रिमूव यू तो कोई रूलिंग रूलिंग नेशन नहीं चाहेगा कि जिस पे वो रूल कर रहा है वो बहुत शिक्षित हो जाए क्योंकि शिक्षा ही तो रूट में है कहीं ना कहीं तो उसने ऐसी शिक्षा पद्धति हमारे ऊपर थोपी कि आप सिर्फ गुलाम बन के रहो फॉलोअर बन के रहो और ज्यादा ज्यादा क्लर्क बन सको तो ये जो शिक्षा नीति हम पिछले डेढ़ सौ सालों से थो डेढ़ सौ सालों से फॉलो करते आ रहे हैं एटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव में जो हम पे थोपी गई थी वो हमें सिर्फ क्लर्क बनाती है हमें सिर्फ र, रट के मार्क्स लाने के लिए कैपेबल बनाती है उससे आगे कुछ सोचने के लिए दिमाग को डेवलप नहीं कर रही तो हमें शिक्षा में तो हम उन चुप शिक्षा में कैसे परिवर्तन करना है क्या क्या परिवर्तन करना है इस पर तो मेरा लॉन्ग लिस्ट रिसर्च है विल डिस्कस वन बाय वन तो शिक्षा एक सबसे कोर चीज है जिसपे हमें वर्कआउट करना है नेक्स्ट इज स्वस्थ भारत चाहिए जैसे इंटरनेशनल योगा डे ट्वेंटी जून को मनाया जाने लगा पूरे पूरे वर्ल्ड में 
भारत ने अपनी एक पहचान बनाई कि आप कितना भी मेडिकल साइंस डेवलप कर लो बट अगर आप अपनी जीवन पद्धति को ठीक नहीं करते हो आप अपने जीने के तरीके को ठीक नहीं करते हो आप 24 फोर आवर्स कैसे जीते हो उसको अगर उस डिसिप्लिन को ठीक नहीं करते हो तो आपका मेडिकल साइंस आपके कभी काम नहीं ज्यादा आ सकता है प्रिवेंशन इज ऑलवेज बेटर देन क्योर और हमारा एंशियंट आयुर्वेदा एंड योगा सिस्टम से सिस्टम ऑफ लिविंग विच विल ऑलवेज प्रिवेंटेड फ्रॉम यू यू प्रिवेंटेड यू फ्रॉम इलनेस एंड अदर थिंग्स देन प्रिवेंशन इज ऑलवेज बेटर देन क्योर आप इस इस चीज को थोड़ा सा समझने की कोशिश करना मैं आपको एक एग्जाम्पल देता हूं एक तरफ तो हम जितने जंक फूड है उसके आउटलेट्स बढ़ाते जा रहे हैं उसकी उसका भी लाइसेंस सरकार ही देती है ऐसा तो नहीं कि हवा से आता है एक लाइन से जंक फूड स्ट्रीट फूड जिस जिसका कोई पैरामीटर नहीं है कोई सर्टिफिकेशन नहीं है कैसे बनाना है कोई रेसिपी अप्रूवल नहीं है बढ़ते जा रहे और लोग खाते भी जा रहे हैं दूसरी तरफ हॉस्पिटल की संख्या बढ़ती जा रही है अब बताओ बीच में बेवकूफ कौन बन रहा है पब्लिक बन रहा है बेवकूफ या कौन बन रहा है एक तरफ आप बोलते हो जंक फूड खूब खाओ दूसरी तरफ बोलते हो उसका तबीयत खराब करो हॉस्पिटल में जाओ जंक फूड खाने के लिए भी पैसे बर्बाद करो हॉस्पिटल में इलाज के लिए भी पैसे बर्बाद करो अगर हमें प्रिवेंशन नहीं अपना सकते तो लोगों को इस तरीके से जबरदस्ती एक इकोनॉमी के सिर्फ ग्रो करने के चक्कर के चक्कर में लोगों को उलझा के रखना ठीक है तो हमें एक स्वस्थ भारत चाहिए उसके लिए जैसे इंटरनेशनल योगा डे भी स्टेब्लिश हुआ है इंटरनेशनल आयुर्वेदा डे भी होना चाहिए कि हमें अपने आयुर्वेदा का जो एंशियंट नॉलेज है वो पूरे दुनिया तक फिर से पहुंचना चाहिए आज सपोज करो आप आपको एक छोटी सी खांसी होती है आप डॉक्टर के पास चले जाओ डॉक्टर आपको पहले बोलेंगे अच्छा खांसी है मुंह देखेंगे ये देखेंगे और आपको दवाई लिख करके तो बाद में देंगे पहले बोलेंगे उनका दूसरे किसी पैथोलॉजी से टाइप है वो पहले बोलेंगे ये टेस्ट करवा के लाओ ब्लड टेस्ट ये टेस्ट वो टेस्ट आप तीन दिन पहले टेस्ट के लिए दौड़ोगे दो जगह ब्लड दोगे अपना यूरिन दोगे सारे टेस्ट के रिपोर्ट आ जाएंगे तब डॉक्टर बैठेंगे सारे को कलेक्ट वो सारे को एनालाइज करेंगे फिर आपको दवाई देंगे और बात कुछ भी नहीं रहेगी बट आप इस घन चक्कर में फंस जाते हैं आप जस्ट इमेजिन करो अगर आप रामायण देखे हो और अगर नहीं देखे हो तो उस एपिसोड को जब लक्ष्मण जी मूर्छित हो जाते हैं जब लक्ष्मण जी मूर्छित हो जाते हैं और जिंदा करने का इस पृथ्वी पर बस एक ही उपाय है कि आप लंका से फिर से वैद्य को लेके आ जाओ करेक्ट उस वैद्य को उठा करके हनुमान जी लेके आते हैं वो वैद्य सिर्फ नारी देख करके और दिल की धड़कन की आवाज सुन करके कि वो आवाज कितनी आ रही है ठीक है सुसैन वेद सुसैन वेद वो वैद्य जो है वो सिर्फ नारी और दिल की धड़कन की आवाज कि आवाज कितने रुक रुक के आ रही कितने टाइम पे आ रही वो इसने पूरी तरह बता दिया कि ये तो मर चुका है इसका जिंदा होने का एक ही उपाय है कि आप हिमालय से जड़ी बूटी लेके आओ वो भी इतने घंटे के पहले आप पूरे 200 साल के मेडिकल साइंस के डेवलपमेंट के बाद आप कोई भी एक ऐसा डॉक्टर लेके आ जाओ हमारे सामने जो कि रोगी को मरने की दशा में सिर्फ नाड़ी पकड़ के और दिल की धड़कन की आवाज़ सुन करके बता दे कि अगले चार घंटे में अगर आपने ये दवा नहीं दी तो ये मर जाएगी आप कोई भी कोई भी एक्सपर्ट को लेके आ जाओ है ही नहीं ऐसा तो ये मेडिकल साइंस जो है ये क्यों ये क्योर देता है जब आप बीमारी में फंस जाते हैं वी नीड ए प्रिवेंशन जितने सेफ्टी मेजर्स होते हैं आप रोड पे जाते हो तो सेफ्टी बोर्ड लगे होते हैं कि आप ऐसे नहीं चलना है वैसे चलना है आप किसी इंडस्ट्री में काम करते हो तो सभी जगह सेफ्टी के इंस्ट्रक्शन लिखे होते हैं तो सेफ्टी मीन्स प्रिवेंसन तो हमारा जो आयुर्वेदा है वो आपको ऐसी जीवन पद्धति देता है जिससे आप हमेशा प्रिवेंशन में रहते हो आपको इलनेस जल्दी छू नहीं पाती है तो स्वस्थ भारत चाहिए और इंटरनेशनल आयुर्वेदा डे भी चाहिए सुसंस्कृत भारत चाहिए हमें सिर्फ ऐसा भारत नहीं चाहिए जैसे कि अमेरिका में होता है अगर अगर भारत सुसंस्कृत जैसा कि एंशियन टाइम में था 
पुलिस स्टेशन की जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ेगी अगर हमारे सारे वैल्यू सिस्टम अच्छे से फिर से री इम्प्लीमेंट हो गए लोगों में तो एवरीबडी इज ए लाइक ए कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया आपको कंट्रोल करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है जिस टाइम में पुलिस स्टेशन नहीं होते थे तो सबको विश्वास था कोई क्राइम नहीं करेगा आपके वैल्यू सिस्टम को इतना इनरीच कर दिया गया था कि आप गलत काम कर ही नहीं सकते आपका अंदर का कॉन्सियसनेस करने ही नहीं देगा आप करोड़ों लोगों को कैसे रोक सकते हो आप बोलोगे पुलिस की व्यवस्था बढ़ा दो कितना भी पुलिस स्टेशन बढ़ा दो आप एक एक आदमी को मॉनिटर कर पाओगे नहीं कर सकते प्रैक्टिकली इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल कितने तरह के क्राइम डोमेस्टिक क्राइम ये क्राइम कर सकते हो नहीं कर सकते आप आए दिन सुनते हैं अमेरिका में कि एक गन शूटर आया कहीं से गाड़ी से निकला और बिना कुछ देखे सुने किसी स्कूल में गया और कहीं पे गया पब्लिक प्लेस में ऐसे गोली चला दी दो सौ लोग मर गए अब इस तरह का साइको मीन्स यू कैन से कि लोग जो है सिर्फ पुलिस के डर से रुके पड़े हैं पुलिस स्टेशन एक दिन हटा तो एक एक दिन के अंदर वो लोग अपने में मार काट के खत्म हो जाएंगे हमारा भारत तो ऐसा था जहाँ पे पुलिस की जरूरत ही हम मिलते हैं तो राम राम कहते हैं जब एक दूसरे को राम राम कहते हैं मतलब एक दूसरे में राम की प्रतिमूर्ति को देखते हैं राम की प्रतिमूर्ति को देखते हैं मतलब एक दूसरे को भगवान का अंश मानते हैं और जब भगवान का अंश मानते हैं तो आप भगवान को नहीं मार सकते उसको हार्म नहीं कर सकते तो सुसंस्कृत भारत चाहिए हमें ऐसा वैल्यू सिस्टम चाहिए जहां पे भारत को फिर से सोने की चिड़िया बोला जा सके भारत को फिर से वैसा ही रूप में चाहिए जैसा पहले था और स्वर्णिम विकसित भारत चाहिए स्वर्णिम विकसित मीन्स वही जो गुप्ता गुप्ता पीरियड में हम गुप्ता पीरियड में हमारे सारे कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट हुए जिस कारण से हम बोलते हैं गुप्ता गुप्ता पीरियड वाज द स्वर्णिम स्वर्णिम टाइम फॉर वो कौन से स्वर्ण काल भारत का स्वर्ण काल मानते हैं ऑलमोस्ट थ्री ए डी टू सेवन ए डी थर्ड ए डी टू सेवेंथ ए डी इट इज कॉल्ड गोल्डन टाइम ऑफ इंडिया Before that, you can say you will go to the uh, just BC, very ancient time. BC time means we around two uh, hundred BC. Then that time, Mauryan Empire and afterwards Ashoka and these all they established India as a kind of Bharat politically. Then this point of time, political development and political development. एंड यू कैन से धार्मिक डेवलपमेंट ज्यादा हुए बट थर्ड एडी टू सेवेंथ एडी कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट ज्यादा हुए और इस समय भारत भारत की जो इकोनमी है वो बिल्कुल पीक पे थी तो थर्ड एडी टू सेवेंथ एडी वी कॉल इट इज ए स्वर्ण 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 काल ठीक है गोल्डन टाइम तो विकसित भारत आज इस एपिसोड में हम लोग जस्ट विल ट्राई टू गो रीडिस्कवरी ऑफ इंडिया जैसा कि मैं इस एपिसोड में स्टार्टिंग से बोल रहा हूँ कि हमें डबल डिजिट अगर जीडीपी का ग्रोथ रेट चाहिए तो हमें भारत को फिर से रीडिस्कवर करना पड़ेगा और इस रीडिस्कवरी को कैसे कॉमन पीपल तक हम मैसेज करेंगे कैसे हम पहुंचाएंगे कैसे कम्युनिकेशन होगा उस पर बातें करनी पड़ेगी तो इस एपिसोड में आज जस्ट हम लोग रीडिस्कवरी के बारे में तो दिस दिस एपिसोड टूडे वी जस्ट विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन ब्रीफ आवर जर्नी पाथ आउटलाइन means whatever we have the known history written history although we no need of our written history we have history of millions millions of years maybe it is spoiled it is destroyed when nalanda was burned third third time that was the final blow then six month their library was keep on burning that how many millions of books would be there it is not like very long back it was the 1199 एडी इट इज हार्डली यू कैन से एट हंड्रेड ईयर्स बिफोर एंड दैट हैज बिकम द फाइनल ब्लो इंडिया हैज नेवर अगेन केम बैक इट वॉज ए फाइनल ब्लो आफ्टर वर्ड्स फुल एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ इस्लाम और यू कैन से मुस्लिम रूल वॉज फुल एस्टेब्लिश्ड आफ्टर वर्ड्स ड्यू टू वी यूज टू टेल आफ्टर ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एडी रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ सोसाइटी वॉज ऑलमोस्ट because resistance was coming from all these knowledge and intellectuals they understood who were the looters and attackers on the india they understood from where resistance are generated they understood these universities are generating the 
talent which are making mobilization of the people which are resisting to us destroy that center destroy that center then they targeted these three big universities of that time of world nalanda tachila and vikramshila they destroyed fully then just we'll try to understand this journey path outline means from last known history to till this time how india will become vikshit bharat and what is the you can say just uh, you can say uh, rough chronology i am not i will not go in detail much slowly slowly episode to episode will start to uh, discuss in detail but today just will go as a rough outline through figures through images just will try to understand this is our india around 600 bc that was the period of mahajanpada consolidation before that 16 mahajanpada was there how janpada has come mahajanpada has come earlier it was a jana jana has become janpad janpad has made mahajanpad then mahajanpad 16 bigger mahajanpad was there out of that koshal was one of there in koshal koshal mahajanpad only you can say ayodhya is coming magadh was there one afterwards uh, uh, ang was there saurashtra was there so many was there this 16 mahajanpada was there this 16 mahajanpada used to fight among each other to prove the supremacy of one over the other then this period was you can say around 700 bc to 400 bc it was a a struggle period a struggle period in the sense all these 16 mahajanpada was fighting against each other or fighting among each other to to just prove who is the supreme around 400 bc around 400 bc magadh has emerged magadh has emerged as a supreme mahajanpada or a strongest mahajanpada out of these 16 mahajanpada this has become the one landmark from where we have started to started to see as a india as a nation before that concept of nation was not there means we were looking as just a state like a koshal ayodhya this this, this like that it was a small or small states as a complete nation concept has come when out of 16 mahajanpada magadh has proven himself as a supreme of all and he defeated all other 15 mahajanpada and all 15 has bowed down under him and accepted his rule and that has given the founding stone as a bharat again we are discussing about vikshit bharat our resource or you can say our uh, just inspiration for that then first time around 400 bc this concept of nation has come as a bharat afterwards after afterwards around 260 bc when maurya empire acquired the magadh kingdom before that so many dynasty has ruled before maurya ghananda was there nanda dynasty nanda dynasty also one of the very powerful dynasty but uh, during that time it was not emerged as a akhand akhand bharat but concept of bharat was there and magadh magadh kingdom was the strongest kingdom but dhananand has insulted chanakya and chanakya has taken the oath to destroy his kingdom and he has picked chandragupta maurya just i am telling you in brief he picked the chandragupta maurya as a replacement of dhananand and given all the ideas all the knowledge and finally chandragupta maurya defeated the Dhan- defeated the dhananand and maurya dynasty has established once maurya dynasty established then they started to expand all the directions politically and slowly slowly culturally also and after after chandragupta maurya bimbisar has come bimbisar was also one of the strong ruler and he continued the legacy of his father and after bimbisar ashoka the great has come he has he has made the history for entire nation he was the greatest of the greatest or he was the great greater greatest than chandragupta maurya and the first time 
एज ए हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया और यू कैन से भारत का इतिहास विच वॉज अ बिग कंट्री दिस इज लाइक अखंड भारत इट वॉज टचिंग इन वेस्ट साइड अप टू बियॉन्ड द ईरान अप टू इराक एंड ईस्ट साइड इट वॉज गोइंग बियॉन्ड म्यांमार नॉर्थ साइड इट वॉज गोइंग बियॉन्ड तिब्बत एंड साउथ साइड ऑफ कोर्स यू कैन से पार्ट ऑफ द लंका वॉज वन सपोन इट अंडर द अशोका रूल डू टू यू विल गो टू द लंका देन स्टिल देयर श्रीलंका देन स्टिल यू विल फाइंड श्रीलंका मेन मेन रिलीजियस ग्रुप इज योर बुद्धिज बिकॉज अशोका टाइम ओनली द बुद्धिज हैज इनकलकेटेड देयर इन दैट टाइम ओनली हिज सन महेंद्र हैज ब्राउट बोधि बिरिछा फ्रॉम पाटलिपुत्रा टू कोलम्बो और यू कैन से कैपिटल ऑफ द श्रीलंका एंड द स्टेब्लिश बुद्धिज्म देयर देन दैट मच बिग किंगडम बी यूज टू टेल अखंड भारत इट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश देयर will move forward this is one of the figure which has put in new parliament when it was inaugurated then this image also created one kind of political criticism and political conflict ki why this akhand bharat was put in new parliament this is our symbolic inspiration if earlier we can do earlier we can do then why not future we will do this is our symbolic symbolic legacy symbolic inspiration if something one time you have done it you become a topper of the class you have the capacity next time also you can then we are we were the champion we can be champion and we will be champion again then this is our one of the inspiration due to in new parliament this picture has put for akhand bharat and after 700 ad means after gupta gupta period when everything was going very on the top slowly 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 from north western part islamic invasion started and islam was that time very new religion because around 560 ad only muhammad sahib date of birth is there there he has taken the birth and around 650 ad only islam has become one of the acceptable religion of middle east then it was a very new religion and they were out of control they were not able to decide what is wrong and what is right even still they are in dilemma they are very fundamentalist still they are they are believing on very rigid and very you can say very rigid and very fundamental principle of the life they are not they are not having very broad thinking about the nature they are not having very broad thinking about the human being they are not having very broad thinking about the insaniyat then 700 after 700 ad slowly slowly invasion started and we can say 800 ad onward they were able to cross the sindhu river and they started to loot the india and that looting was so painful and 800 ad and due to i told 800 ad to 1200 ad it was the settling period due to i quoted 1199 ad it was the last effort third effort to destroy the nalanda and once nalanda is destroyed who is destroyed nalanda third time third time after once it is destroyed then after 1200 ad islam has become fully established bakhtiyar khilji bakhtiyar khilji was the person who put last and you can say a final effort to destroy it and after 1200 ad after 1200 ad islam has become fully established in india and we can say officially 1200 ad to 1857 ad they ruled without much without much resistance and without much much oppose from the indian society or indian states or indian rulers 800 AD to 1200 AD it was a settling period they were getting resistance from some parts or a small small states of the india but they were able to encounter it but still they were getting the resistance but 1200 AD onward the resistance was almost nil and due to in hindi literature you will find this kal is a bhakti kal because people has become you can say people become so like pessimistic they understood nothing can be happen if nothing can happen what you will do you will start to pray to the god because you lost your pursartha due to this kal is bhakti kal also all surdas 
Tulsidas, Mira, all Bhakti period is 1200 AD only. People have surrendered in front of God. Now, Bhagavan, to me, kuch karo, hum log kuch nahi kar sakte. They were too much tortured. Atrocities on the women during Islamic invasion on India and multiple things. Once you will read the story, you will start to cry. They were human beings or not. They have, give, they have done that much atrocities against Hindus or against Indian people. If you will read the history, you will start to cry literally. Okay, we'll move forward. One person has come from Portuguese. From He has started from the, this uh, 1497 and he reached, he reached the Calicut of India on 20 May 1498, name was Vasco da Gama, name was Vasco da Gama, due to it is called discovery of India, I used to say it is not discovery of India, India was there, before that long back was there, but it was the discovery of sea route or naval route to India, this was surely discovery, discovery of sea route from Europe to India. Before that, from Europe to India, nobody was having guts to reach, how to reach from Europe to India. Vasco da Gama has taken that risk and almost two years he was sailing in the sea and finally he reached the Calicut. And he has discovered the route of the route of sea route from Europe to India and it has given one of the opening of the you can say business and started to export import business and many of the things are started like before that only silk route was the famous business route other than silk route no nothing was famous route but once that this naval route sea route has discovered then what happened this also become a one of the famous route of the business and Vasco da Gama famous journey has changed the course of the nation of India also. Here Islamic, Islamic control started to weaken and British slowly, slowly established their control over the India. And slowly, slowly British has taken full control, started from one of the company that is called East India Company. East India Company started and that company slowly, slowly taken all the political decision in their own hand and controlled entire India politically or by defense or economically. And after British rule established, another issue started to happen. It was a social exploitation. During Islamic rule, it was the worst condition like atrocities on the women and atrocities on the Hindus or Indian people. But here atrocity was not there during British rule, but it was the exploitation of the people. It was the extreme exploitation of the people. They started to exploit, exploit the people till death. Still they are not dying, keep on extract it. And this is the one of the image which will tell you the story of the exploitation of India. This is famine of Bengal. It is famous famine where uh, millions of people died and that time if British could be killed little bit, maybe multiple times death rate could be reduced. Anyway, they exploited. They wanted to grow based on the exploitation of the Indian people. And one of the viceroy, one of the viceroy has told, their statement was there. British system is like a sponge, like a sponge are working. You can absorb the water and you can again remove the water at some place. Then he told, our British system is like a sponge, a sponge system. We are putting on the, on the bank of the river Ganga and extracting it. In the Thames River of the England. And that way, due to Dada Bhai Nairoji has told, it is a drain of the wealth. He has written one of the very good book. If you, you will get time, you can read. 
here you will find all the quantification of how wealth has drained from India to UK or England during British rule in multiple ways. It was not only one way. It was not only trade way. Trade way, illegal way, political way, whatever ways they found, they have drained the wealth. And India has become one of the poorest country on this earth. 780, India was Sone ki chiriya. And in 1780, India has become one of the poorest country on this earth. This thousand years has become, you can say, horrible for us. It was too much horrible. It is, you can say, beyond repair. And finally, after all these things, anything will become very extreme, something will happen. And revolt of 1857 happened. And 10th May 1857, when revolt of 1857 happened by Mangal Pandey in Meerut, then full country has come in different level of energy. Will just British ko bhaga apna self rule karo. But again, that revolt was not successful because direction was not much decided. Revolt to ho gaya, but uske tantra jo the, wo reach jo hai, wo logo tak nahi tha. Isliye wo revolt jo hai suppress kar diya. Or anyway, Gandhi ji came in picture and Gandhi ji has taken the command of the Indian independence. independence. And finally, I will come positive and negative point about the Gandhi and this independent Andolan latter. But anyhow, India got the freedom on 1947. And this was again, we got the freedom, but at the cost of millions of people died during changing from India to Pakistan and one side happiness, one side sorrowness. Millions of people died. Millions of people has become, you can say, they left their home. They were not having the home. They were not having their society. Their family died. Their family has become, you can say, they came on the road. One side, Pandit Nehru was giving the speech of tryst with the destiny. Other, another side, the Sikh people were dying or sick people were killing in Pakistan. One side, Pandit Nehru was hoisting the flag of independent India. On other side, millions of people were slaughtered in Lahore. One side, Pandit Nehru was giving some consolidation or some, some you can say, some uh, relief to the, in, uh, to the people of India. On another side, in Bengal, millions of people died in front of in front of Mahatma Gandhi. Due to 15 August 1947, Mahatma Gandhi was not present during this uh, flag hoisting ceremony. He was in the Bengal somewhere. He was trying to suppress the suppress the conflict between, or we can say whatever Danga was happening between Hindu and Muslim. Then we got the independence, but very heavy cost we paid. India was divided, not not with any solid reason, not with any proper formula, not with any, any proper international law. One person has come, his name was Redcliffe, and he was not aware at all what is the cultural difference between India, Hindustan, Pakistan, and why Pakistan is forming. Even he was not knowing why, why Pakistan name is given itself. Pakistan name is given based on the four prant are there. Like we have 28 major states, in India. Similarly, Pakistan is having only four major states. And they have given name, a starting words they have picked. They have picked Pakistan, uh, Punjab, Kashmir, Baluchistan, Pakistan, Kashmir, Baluchistan, and Sindh. Correct? If you will just make these letters, it will make the Pakistan. Then Red Clip was not knowing what is the name of Pakistan, what is what is meaning of that. P for Punjab, K for Kashmir, S for Sindh, and last T A N is Baluchistan. This is the four prant of Pakistan. And based on that, they name, kept name of Pakistan. He came as a like a new learner. He was not knowing anything. Like a, we are cutting the cutting the slice of a, slice of a butter or bread. He taken one pen and put line like this between India and Pakistan, and. Pakistan has taken the birth as a nation. Multiple times he accepted. 
the british government has given very less time for him to understand about the india and they have put lot of pressure to divide india in india and due to lot of mistake happened during division even division itself was not justified still i am not in favor why india was divided it was not it, it would not happen all indian all indian leadership would be stopped that why it was required if it happen then it would happen fully if you are dividing on the on the name of the religion then it would be fully divided all all muslim muslim will go one side all hindu will go one side it is not happen half cooked thing happen and only to gain the power one side nehru was the seeker of seeker of power another side mohammad ali jinnah was the seeker of power both wanted to become prime minister how it will be possible you cut the cut the country in two part both become prime minister and both has fulfilled their personal ambition nation is not for the personal ambition nation is not for the personal ambition national ambition is national ambition only can fulfill your personal ambition but don't make this as a personal ambition otherwise nation will nation will face a still india is facing how much energy how much energy is wasted to fight with pakistan or conflict with pakistan although they don't have capacity to fight with us they are so small tiny country uh, for us but still how much energy we wasted last 50 years just to encounter pakistan our focus is not going anywhere else we are indulged in so almost we are facing internal threat external threat terrorism afterwards uh, you can say internal terrorist external terrorist or border terrorist what is this all these things was not required at all okay anyway india divided with heavy cost and india pakistan has become independent on 15th august 1947 this was the scene when Gan nehru started the journey of independent india but heavily depending on british due to i told dependent independent don't mistake me dependent independent it was independent but depending on other nation and british has made a system you cannot go out of out of control of british after freedom also many of the years british used to control british used to interfere all our decision major decisions it is not publicly interference but they used to make the influence to government of india you have to take decision like this government of india was following it for that all these dependency independent over now we are looking for coming out for all these lacuna and we are fully determined to make viksit bharat 2017 whatever we have left out 20 25 years we will put hard effort and 24 into 7 time will utilize and energy will utilize and will make india as a viksit bharat in 2047 this is our goal but this is not our mission our mission is vishguru bharat this is our stop a stepping stone once we will achieve developed developed bharat viksit bharat next step our mission will be there vishguru bharat thank you thank you very much again the discussion will continue in next episode thank you